my name is Liz Swire. Um, I'm a researcher and a qualified doctor in Cambridge. Um, I guess I was um, working as a lymphoma pathologist. So I was um, someone who diagnosed biopsies from people with cancers of the cells that make up their immune system. And um, at that point in my life, I had two children in fairly short succession. And my children, um, well, I, I, they cried a lot and they both seemed to have terrible diarrhea and they didn't sleep very well and they were just very grumpy. And I didn't realize until I had the second one that really this wasn't normal. And once they started going to nursery, nursery were very clear about the fact that these children were not normal. They didn't sleep like normal children and they had the most dreadful diarrhea that normal children didn't have. And I have to say, as a qualified doctor, I didn't think of celiac disease, and I'm embarrassed about that now. So I got the big medical textbook down off my shelf, which I hadn't read in years, and looked through the page on diarrhea with sort of fatty appearance to it, and crossed out everything in it that I was sure they didn't have, and was left with two choices, giardia or celiac disease. Giardia is an infection you can get from drinking water if it's not properly purified. And we tested one of the children for it through the GP and he didn't have that. And it suddenly dawned on me that he had celiac disease. So we went gluten free as a family. And I have to say that after two weeks, the effect on the children was extraordinary. They stopped, they stopped crying all the time and began to sleep and began to be interested in their food. And it was at that point that I suddenly started tying this up with my work as a pathologist. And thinking about the fact that um, for many years I'd known that we weren't that good at diagnosing biopsies for celiac disease. I think most of the rest of the medical profession assume that if we say it is, it's always right. And if we say it's not, it can't be. And it just isn't that simple because we're looking at a very complex shape. It's, it's a bit like looking at lots of different trees and comparing similar trees and saying, does that one look different to that one? When they're actually all the same type of tree and trying to divide them into two groups. So actually, there are times when I'm sure we do get it wrong and that's often because the person hasn't eaten enough gluten um, because they can't, because it just makes them so ill. And for me, I think this was a really, really good experience. I mean, it was a very negative experience at the time, but it made me understand what patients really need from us. And so I thought, well, hang on a minute. I'm a lymphoma pathologist. I look at the DNA from lymphocytes as part of my job. And it suddenly dawned on me that there would be a way of using that knowledge that we use to diagnose some lymphomas by means of looking at their DNA, that actually we could also look at their DNA in a similar way to diagnose celiac disease and to see if the DNA in the lymphocytes from people with celiac disease was very slightly different to the people who didn't have it. Um, and just to fill you in a little bit, um, lymphocytes are strange cells. They're different to every other cell in the body in that they can change their DNA just very slightly because it changes the genetic code for whatever it is that they can recognize and attack. And so, People who've got celiac disease have lymphocytes that have genetic code, allowing them to attack gluten and probably parts of your own gut as well. And in general, people that don't have celiac disease don't have the DNA that allows their lymphocytes to do that. So I was very lucky. I was working in Oxford at the time and I put in an application as a full-time NHS consultant. I put in an application to say, I'd had this rather harebrained idea that we wanted to look at the DNA coming from biopsy samples to see if we could tell which of them were from celiac patients and which weren't. And I was very lucky that Celiac UK took this seriously and they provided me with money for a pilot study to see if it worked. And it did. And that has spawned a whole load of things. Not only has it allowed me to get considerable subsequent funding to follow this idea up and see if we really can make a better way 
of testing people for celiac disease, but it's also allowed me to move into a position in Cambridge where I'm running my own research group and our focus is celiac disease. So I'm really grateful to Celiac UK for giving me that opportunity. And just to reiterate, what we're trying to do is to make a new test that's based on the genetic code from inside cells of your immune system that allows us to look at a biopsy from somebody who may or may not have celiac disease, compare it to biopsies where we're really sure about the answer, compare it to their genetic codes from their lymphocytes, and to decide whether the patient does or doesn't have celiac disease. And it may be, we're very hopeful that this may work, that we can actually, in the end, not even need a biopsy, but do it on a blood sample. The advantage to doing it on biopsies compared with current tests, there are two advantages. One is that we can give a hard and fast answer. It's not maybe, it's either it is or it isn't. And the second thing is that we've shown that people on a gluten-free diet still have that same signal in their biopsy. The pathologist would call their biopsy normal and would say they didn't have celiac disease. But with our test, we can say that they do have celiac disease, even if they haven't eaten gluten. So we're trying to make a test where we can look at biopsies from people on gluten-free diet or possibly look at blood and make a better test for celiac disease. Mm -hmm.